GPT 4.1 is really impressive when it comes to coding. However, this is not the model I'll personally use for coding tasks. It's a huge upgrade when compared to GPT 4.0, especially when it comes to intelligence, latency, and cost. However, I think there are much better options out there. More on that later in the video. In this video, I'll show you how to get started with this model. We're going to do some preliminary coding tests. I'm going to be using the official playground from OpenAI since the model is not available in ChatGPT. If you are interested in the benchmarks and technical details, I already covered that in my previous video. Link is going to be in the video description. Apart from the official playground, the model is also available for free in Cursor and Windsurf. Okay, so we're going to start off very simple and we are going to give the model creative freedom. But later on, we're going to get more and more specific to see if the model can stick to our prompts or not. So here, from the list of the models, I'm going to select GPT 4.1. Now, uh, by default, in the playground, the output is limited to only 2,000 tokens. Since we're doing coding challenges, I'm going to extend it to all the way up to 16,000 tokens. And for coding, we're going to limit the temperature to zero. My first prompt is going to be code a modern landing page using HTML, CSS, and JS, and put everything in a single file. I just want to see its coding capabilities. It has a lot of creative freedom for this specific prompt. We are not really asking it to do anything specific. Let's see what it comes up with. Now the speed of generation is definitely a lot faster compared to GPT-40 and seems like it is generating a lot of tokens. Okay, so it took about 33 seconds and generated about 3,000 tokens. Let's see if the code that it wrote will actually work. So I'm going to copy this. We're going to go to our online HTML editor let me paste it here. Let's run it. And we have a pretty decent looking website. So let's see what it decided to do. Uh, there are two links. It added a contact us form as well. Uh, there is a hero section, right? So normally what you would expect from uh, a SaaS website, it probably has the components. We're going to follow the same theme, but this time we are asking it to create a website. That has a single button, click me. It's supposed to show a random joke and also change the background color as well as add an animation. I don't expect the jokes to be novel. Right away, we can see that it's talking about Atom's joke. I wish there was a way to actually remove some of these things from the training data. All right, so let's run this. We do see a button that says click me. And yeah, it's adding random animations. So this is a relatively simple task for any LLM. Okay, so one more coding te test that is going to be related to website creation. So create a simple encyclopedia of the first 25 legendary Pokemon, including their types, load snippets, and images. Create a single file with CSS, JS, and HTML. Now this prompt specifically tests its training data and its ability to use very specific knowledge. Now, in this case, we ask it to use images. So you can see here that it came up with some images or URLs. Now, I don't think these are functional, but the Pokemon are famous enough that it's going to have this information in its training data. Now, when we try this, you can actually see it came up with a list of 25 Pokemons. The problem is that the web links are not working. Search mechanism seems to be working fine. So that is pretty neat. Now, the only problem is that the image URLs it was using are non-functional. Now, the good thing is that GPT 4.1 can use internet. So in order to test its agenting capabilities, 
we are going to provide a web search tool that it can use to look up information. So here we added that web search tool. Now I am going to just ask it exactly the same thing. The only addition is going to be use web search tool to find working links for images if needed. So again, we are going to let it decide if it wants to use web search or not. In this case, it says that it searched the web, but it doesn't seem that it actually used any web search. It and it generated updated code with new links. These links seems to be functional. So let's test it out and see what happened. Okay, so in this case, we're going to just replace this code with updated code. And it seems like those links are now fully functional. Although I think it also removed the search capability. However, this shows that the image URLs were present in the training data. All we had to do was just ask it again and it's able to retrieve that information for us. Now I do want to see how good this is at using tools. So here is a prompt that we're going to use. What is model context protocol and how is it different from agent to agent protocol? Now there's no way these things were in its training data because MCP were announced back in November, agent to agent protocol was announced last week, but we're going to give it a web search tool and let's see what the response that we get. All right, so it talks about model context protocol, which is an interfacer API specification that allows clients to interact with AI by maintaining and manipulating the context. Now, this sounds plausible. However, it's a perfect example of the LLM just hallucinating. It's not actually correct. Let's talk about agent to agent protocol. So it's designed to specifically communicate between two or more agents. Now this is plausible based on the definition or the name, but then it says it's open AI's protocol for inter agent messaging. Again, it's simply hallucinating. It's just making up stuff at this point. It actually even included a table Pretty nice, right? As you have probably noticed that these LLMs, when they generate responses, they are extremely confident, even if they are just making up stuff. And in this example, we can see a serious problem with this specific model, that even though the tool is available for it to use, it decided not to use. This time, I'm going to tell it to use the web search tool if needed. I'm going to again provide the tool and let's see what it does. So at least it started searching the web and now I think it's using the web search tool because we can see it's referring to talks from Anthropic. So now it says MCP is an open standard developed by Anthropic to facilitate seamless integration between large language models and external data sources. So this is great. Now it's able to get the proper information. However, we still run into an issue. And it says regarding the agent to agent protocol, I couldn't find specific information provided in the sources. It's possible that this term refers to protocol facilitating direct communication between autonomous agents, allowing them to collaborate or share information, right? Now, this was a single turn conversation. So I think it's only look for MCP rather than agent to agent, or maybe some of the sources are not properly indexed yet. Now, as you can see, this is a potential issue that it's not able to properly use the tool. However, I think we will need more thorough testing and more agentic framework or a workflow to figure out how good this model is at using tools or function calling. Now, this next prompt is designed to test multiple things. First, it's coding capability, then it's creativity. Third, it's instruction following capabilities. So we asked it to code a TV channel with number keys from zero to nine. It has to come up with idea for each channel, which is inspired by the classic genre of TV channels. Then for each one of them, it needs to show interesting animations in a creative name for the channel on the screen. Everything needs to be within a square box using P5JS, no HTML, and 
everything needs to stay masked to the TV set area and we want it to put everything into a single file. So it generated this, this code which is about 500 lines. Gemini actually created about a thousand lines of code for this. Now if we run this, this actually looks pretty neat, especially the animation for the first channel and the name is Retro Cartoon. So this seems to be pretty creative. Now the only problem that I see is that the sketch is not a square sketch, but so far I would say like the quality of the animations that I have seen is probably one of the best on all the models that I have tested on this specific prompt. Now here I think the orientation is, could use some help, probably it could be more centered, but so far the names are pretty creative. Also the animations, as I said, are really interesting and it seems like all of them are inspired from actual genres of TV channels. So pretty neat so far. This next one also has a specific set of requirements. The last prompt that I tested was the one that actually caused a lot of trouble. And we're going to look at that later in the video. So here we're asking it to create a JavaScript animation of falling letters with realistic physics. Now they should randomly appear at the top of the screen with different sizes. They need to fall under Earth's gravity. They need to have collision detection based on the actual size of the letters and their shapes. And there needs to be interaction between the ground letters and screen boundaries. We are also providing it needs to have specific density properties, right? And what we want the color of the background to look like. So it generated this code. Okay, let's see if it actually is going to work. So we start seeing some letters falling down. They are interacting with the ground and even I think with other letters as well. So this is pretty neat. The original O1 release was not able to do this. So it's a pretty impressive that 4.1 is able to easily deliver this. And even with screen size changes, seems like it's holding up pretty nicely. Now, one thing which I wanted to point out is that all of these tests that I'm doing are single shot code generation. Usually these LLMs are really good at single shot code generation from scratch. However, the real test is code edits or code modifications. So let's say if you have an existing code base and you ask these LLMs to modify or add a feature, that's where most of the real world applications are and we need to have a better testing mechanisms for that. Okay, so this last test is probably the most complex one and I haven't seen a single LLM except Claude able to do this. So I'm asking it to write an HTML program that shows 20 balls bouncing inside a spinning heptagon. So this is a variation of the viral ball bouncing within a hexagon, but now we need we are asking it to have 20 different balls and it needs to be within a heptagon so it needs to have seven sides now all the balls have the same radius all balls have numbers on them from 1 to 20 the ball drops from the center of the heptagon here are the color profiles for each one of them they need to be under the effect of gravity and friction and they need to have realistic collisions with other balls as well as with the sides of the heptagon, right? There are some other requirements as well. So this is a very specific set of requirements. This is the type of the thing that you probably would put together in terms of the requirements for a real working project. And now we're not really giving the model a lot of creative freedom. So let's see what it can do with these requirements. Here's the code that it produced. Now here's the output. So let me run this again. It starts at the center. It seems like all the balls are lined up and I don't know, it does this crazy thing. Everything just goes here, which does not make any sense. Seems like it's not able to track the actual collision detection. So let's run this again. Everything seems to be lined up, all the balls and then they are following exactly the same movements. 
Okay, so I ran this specific prompt a couple of times, but for some reason it failed every time. Okay, so overall, based on my limited testing, it does seem to be a pretty impressive coding model. However, the question is whether I will use it as my daily driver or not. And the answer to that question is probably not. So let me explain why. The official results on Ader Polyglot coding benchmark are out. GPT 4.1 is coding about 52%. That's just behind DeepSeq V3 and Grok 3 Beta. Now, the total cost for running this model is $9.86 or about $10. However, the best model that you see is Gemini 2.5 Pro. That's the preview version, which is probably about 66% of the cost of running GPT 4.1 on this specific benchmark. Now, and the reason is that Gemini 2.5 Pro uses different pricing based on the number of tokens. If you use less than 200,000 tokens in the output, it's actually less expensive than GPT 4.1. If you more, if you use more tokens, it's probably around, I would say like 10% more expensive compared to GPT 4.1. But anyways, if you look at the performance difference and the cost difference for this specific data set, it does not make any sense to use GPT 4.1 when you have availability of Gemini 2.5 Pro. Similarly, if the cost is the main measure, then even for the smaller mini, and I would say even for the nano use case, you have a better option of DeepSeq V3 or Gemini Flash, which are probably a lot more performant, but a lot less expensive. Here's a relevant tweet from Pierre Bongard, who is an AI scientist working on RNA at Harvard. And I think this also gives you a really good idea of you probably are better off using either Gemini 2.5 Pro or something like DeepSeq R1. Now, Again, this is a pretty impressive model for coding. However, I think OpenAI was not able to really make a good case for its use, given its price point and performance. Now, it's definitely a lot more impressive compared to GPT 4.0. However, you already had models like Flash with a very similar performance, but at a much lower price point. No, no. Now, do let me know what you think. I'll still be testing this model for some of the agentic tasks because sometimes these benchmarks don't really capture the full picture. There might be use cases specifically for something like GPT 4.1. So let me know if you find a use case or which model you prefer. Anyways, I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching. And as always, see you in the next one.